Hey everybody, Dev here. I get a lot of requests to do battle reports. I wish I could put out a battle report every week. I mean, I'd be playing a game every week. Uh, truth be told, I don't tape every game I play, and every game I tape doesn't wind up on YouTube as a battle report. It might, uh, for whatever reason, just not really, I feel, be suitable to it. I want to have a nice production and everything and uh, have it be top-notch quality, and they don't all work out that way. So what I've got here is sort of the scraps off the cutting room floor, if you will. If this was a DVD of my battle reports, this would be under special features as the deleted scenes. It's not going to have the standard production that I do. There's not going to be any title screens, no music, any of that kind of stuff. But it will maybe hopefully satisfy so many of those of you that have been asking me for battle reports. And it's sort of like a tribute to Joe. Joe's moved, so there goes my, my gaming partner living right up the street. So the battle reports are probably going to be maybe few and far between from here on out. Sorry to let you know that. Uh, I'm kind of bummed, but here we go. Let's take a look. Play some Warhammer. He's got his orcs and goblins again against my lizard men. We've got a bit more of an urban setting here. Joe brought over some of his terrain for us to use. We've already deployed and rolled, and Joe is elected to go first. He's uh, denied a flank to me, so renders some of my deployment obsolete. He had more units than I did, so he was able to do that. He's got some river trolls here protecting that. I think he's doing like a, a 300 Sparta thing. That's his pass there. <laughs> and then he's got some air boys. Uh, this, he tells me, is a unit of Savage Orcs. I, I guess I'll take him at his word. He's got a Savage Orc General in there and a Savage Orc uh, Hero. And then uh, there's a Shaman, I think, in there too or something. Uh, Night Goblins. And then these are just some plain old Orc Boys. He's got two Bolt Throwers here. And then he's got the Wolf Riders and a Giant. And then coming down my opposite flank behind the woods I've got some skink skirmishers there's a skink priest in there and then I've got the uh, pterodon riders got those guys painted up to use and now I've got salamanders this time I'm taking three hopefully they'll get a shot off this game my temple guard with the slan mage priest and then coming around hidden behind the building I've got the uh, saurus and then the skink cohort with a couple croxagores and then a unit of just croxagores holding down the flank. So we're going to get started here and we'll check back in. We've just finished turn one. I've advanced my battle line up. Got some guys hiding in the forest here. The uh, arboreal flight rules are pretty cool. It's keeping me from getting charged by wolves into the giant. I uh, cast a magic missile through the eyes of the skink priest and took out some crew of the bolt thrower. The salamanders hit the goblins, killed about six of them, and then they passed their uh, their panic check, even though I cast some, uh, I don't know, dark doom and despair thing. I've taken the death magic, so they're at minus three leadership. And we're just getting ready for turn two. We'll see if what Joe's got up his sleeve. Nothing. Finished up turn two. The uh, pterodons came out. Uh, dropped some rocks on the wolves. The wolves held though, didn't panic. These salamanders, they're really cool when they actually get a shoot. Uh, pretty much took out the whole night goblin unit. They failed their panic test. And so they're running back. They don't have enough guys to rally. So I don't have to worry about fanatics. Um, just advancing stuff forward. Those cows Those... will be slain later. Have some Pringles, man. Cheer up. <laughs> Getting ready for turn three. Okay, we just finished our third turns. Uh, at the beginning of my turn, I, my pterodons had to take a terror test because of their proximity to the giant. Notice that they are absent from the table. They uh, fled directly away from him, right off the short edge there. Uh, the wolves keep on trucking around here. Uh, the uh, salamanders rebelled this turn and ate about half of the crew. Uh, no casualties or anything like that. Goblins are still going. I've killed all the crew for his bolt throwers. Those guys are glued to the base. I was trying to talk Joe into ripping them off, but he refused. Understandably so. Uh, I keep advancing stuff around here. A little bit hesitant to close in the middle. I want to see if I can goad him into coming towards me. Starting turn four. Battle ended shortly after that. On Joe's turn four, he charged those trolls around the building um, into the skinks with the crocs of gores. He inflicted, if I recall, six wounds on me, but... I still outnumbered him and had three ranks and had a standard and um, yeah, so 
Uh, I did a couple wounds, I think, and we tied at a musician. He His trolls were outside of the general's leadership. They were testing on fours, maybe, and yeah, they, they didn't do so well. After that, I, he just... We called it a day and uh, went on to other things. This next battle you're going to see uh, had some, some of the neighbor kids come over and join out. And we let them set up the terrain. I had already had my army list designed. The one, uh, Jared, he, he was designing the army list. Let them pretty much run the whole show. So if you see some screwy things or whatnot, hey, it's two guys that have never played before. Uh, going at it, just we're all having a good time. Let me show you what I'm going to be fielding here. I've got a giant there, and then I've got a unit of Chaos Knights, but you can't tell that they're marked with the uh, mark of corn. Got a unit of, these are Marauder Horsemen. I'm not a big fan of the Marauder models. If I wanted to paint a bunch of humans, I'd be playing Empire. So I use Beastmen models to represent Marauders when I play the Warriors of Chaos. So these are Marauder Horsemen. Uh, they're armed with spears as shown and I got my general there uh, he's the corn lord on the juggernaut I was going to give him the axe of corn but man that's just kind of rude so I gave him the cast rune sword and then I've got another unit of marauder horsemen with uh oh uh, he's an exalted hero actually not a not a lord um, he's also an exalted hero on a juggernaut and he's got a sort of mind I think and then I've got three screening units of chaos hounds here and a unit of Chaos Warriors, just a level one Sorcerer Slanesh in there. The Chaos Warriors are marked Slanesh. And then here's my Lord. It's a Sorcerer Lord on the disc of Zinch. And uh, hoping he can do some cool stuff zipping around. Hey, we have just done our deployment. We've got a development. We've got two guest generals today hey, playing the part of the Warriors of Chaos. We've got Leaf. And then Jared is going to be taken over for the uh, the vampire general here and they've set up the terrain so this is what we've got coming down the warrior side we got the hounds and then a unit of the marauders the warriors the sorcerer lord another hound with the unit of marauders giant hounds and then the knights of corn facing off against uh these are blood knights i guess and then a uh, unit of skeletons the necromancer Another unit of skeletons, some grave guard. I think those are zombies hiding behind the tree. And some dire wolves over here, guarding the temple. Here we are at the end of turn one. Uh, some notable things, the sorcerer lord positioned out there. He took out the banshee with a flickering fire. And he infernal gatewayed the grave guard, but only did some strength seven hits. Took a few models out of there. A unit of zombies were raised in the undead player's turn. And uh, Chaos advanced here, the, uh, putting the wolves, the, the hounds out there so that the blood knights are going to be baited into that. And then hopefully the, the knights of corn will get them in the flank. The giant maybe will hold them up too. Okay, end of Jared's turn two. Hounds here got wiped out and the dire wolves have pursued into the unit there on the bridge. And there's some fighting going on on the other bridge. This is kind of a screw one here. The Grave Guard charged, uh, broke the hounds. The hounds did not flee far enough, so they're kind of broken and stuck between the unit of Grave Guard and the unit of the horsemen. And then over here, the Blood Knights had to charge the hounds, wiped them out, had to overrun into the giant, and it's looking like they're going to get charged in the rear by the Knights of Corn. And the zombies are just standing there because they cannot overrun. Getting ready for Leaf's turn two. End of Leaf's turn two, these guys cleared the uh, dire wolves off the bridge. The hounds rallied. And down here, the uh, there was the charge of the Chaos Knights into the rear of the Blood Knights. The Chaos Knight giant combo managed to win the combat by one and uh, now the blood lights have lost blood knights have lost their frenzy so we'll see how things turn out and uh, even though we had only made it through two turns we had our, that had taken uh, some like four hours or so so we called it at that point i had some family obligations to tend to so that's that game so i hope you enjoyed it uh, i know it's not up to the usual quality but maybe it will 
sate your thirst for some battle report action. Who knows? Uh, 